you doing again? Are you okay? If I come over here, you can probably hear me a little bit louder. It's Giz, and I'm going through like a series of these videos where I get a guitar out and I'll play one of the songs off the Jaina Stark album, the new one, Angel in the Flames, and then I'll teach you how to play it. And, um, you know, each of the videos, I want to try and pull out a different guitar. And in this case, I'm going to pull out an old friend. This one has seen a lot of big stages. It's seen a lot of action. Um, I got this one when I was in The Prodigy. So this saw, you know, a lot of tours and a lot of massive gigs. Um, well, like, for instance, it would have seen probably Red Square in Moscow, 1997, I think. It would have seen that stage. Very much sure about that. It also would have seen the Jaina Stark album, Great Adventure Cigar, because I used it on the song Every Little Thing Counts and Barriers and many other songs. Used it throughout the album, along with Les Pauls and stuff like that. And I use it on the new album too. And I use it in this song, which is called The Last Exit to Change Your Mind. And I've done a run through. So now I'm going to show you how to play some of the stuff. Um, uh, I'll start off with the rhythm guitar stuff. And I'll give you a little bit of an uh, explanation of you know, where some of these ideas come from and how you can explore them yourself a little bit further and then you know maybe you can play along with the song as well that would be really good I'd like that and I'll sort out a backing track for you and you can do it okay so the intro of the song starts off with this kind of okay which is a little bit of a kind of who sounding idea you know the who um I mean, it's just suspended fourth, desuspended fourth. And I use the open string to make it sound big. G. And the kind of G that I always prefer to use is one of these. And I call them like an ACDC G because I'm not putting my first finger down. I'm kind of blanking off the A string. And I'm using my third and fourth fingers. So it's not got a country and western sound like this G. So this G, I mean, it's got its uses, but to me, that's more of a country sound. This one is more rock, all right? More ACDC. And then A. So I'm going. Now, you might kind of hear yourself that there is, even in that little intro, there is something going on with the chords. I'm just using major chords. So I'm just, you know, apart from the suspended fourth. Now that means that I am already venturing outside of a scale. The second that you start to do that kind of thing, just build things up with major chords. Okay, it's a bit of a... Um, I'd say it's kind of like a Rolling Stones thing to do, where they just stack major chords one after another, um, like a kind of a... Just loads and loads, and you know, that's what punk bands used to do. They didn't follow the rules. So like, for instance, they wouldn't be going... And that would be what I would describe as being modal. Uh, it's inside a scale. It's inside a mode. It's all within one scale. All the notes fit into that. But here, they step outside. Oh, it's got a nice uplifting feeling. Let's get on to the verse. some nice chords going on here um let's take a look at these chords okay so i've got b and then i've got this thing okay so this could be 
could be one of a couple of things. It could be C major 7 with a B root. Yeah, that's what it could be. It could also be G6 with a B root. But either way, it's a funny chord. Where does it come from? You know, I used to have a jazz guitar teacher when I was 11 years old, and he taught me how to construct chords. And he said, if you do it like this, you won't have to learn them. You can just construct them. You can name them afterwards. So what I decided was I was going to construct my own chords. And I did construct the, the chords with inspiration from a scale. And the scale that I was inspired by was this beauty. <laughs> Okay, so what's this then? Let's take a look. Okay, I'm using a, a melodic minor scale. And it's just ascending. You know, the actual real melodic minor scale, it's really mad because it ascends in one way and it descends in another way. But let's not split hairs. What I'm doing is... I'm actually playing kind of like from a mode of the melodic minor scale. Whoa, we're getting all heavy now. It starts off like a major scale in B. But then it goes to a flattened sixth or a minor sixth, which is kind of more like a, a minor scale. That's it. And then on B major, you see, you'd normally you'd go to this note. But we're not going to do that. We're going to go to, which is again, more like a minor scale. So. So you see, my scale is actually starting off major and then going into minor. But this is a mode of the melodic minor scale. And the melodic minor scale would be E melodic minor. Now, if I find the fifth note of that scale, I've got B. So if I build a new scale but use all the same notes from B, then I get that, and it's got a great sound. And then when you take notes from that scale and you make chords with it, that's what I've done here. Okay, so I'm using B, and then the chord that I've already described. To keep it simple, let's just call it C major 7 slash B. I mean, that's complicated enough, yeah? Then we're going to go over to G major 7. Very mellow chord, sounds, you know, like you're in an art exhibition. And uh, this one is called F sharp minor 7. And then I use that with the gallop rhythm. And then I throw in A. Like that. Okay, then I go on to the pre-chorus. that and um, this pre-chorus it's just a c sharp minor f sharp minor c sharp minor back to the f sharp minor back to the c sharp minor and then d so i'm kind of going out there again let's have a check No, no, the D's in. OK, 
Okay, so basically, you hear the way I'm looking inside the scale? I'm turning the scale into chords. So that's like a chord scale. So I am inside a scale when I do all this lot. But then I go out of the scale. Because then I play a, a B major and you can feel this change. And then I'm in the chorus. Now the chorus has got... It's got this chord here. And this again is lending itself to a scale. And this is a bit of a special one. This one's called the Lydian mode. And this is used a lot in film soundtracks. And if you imagine that if you had to write music for films, then you need to make it atmospheric because you're trying to conjure up images, you know, with people's imagination. You're, you're, you're trying to use notes and the relationship between notes to create images. So you'll find that certain chords will do that. Um, and they're often used in that way. So... Now the, the Lydian mode has got like a, almost like a pining kind of sound. It's like, it's really on the edge, crying out, you know. Yeah, it's, and then it resolves. And also it's got a kind of like quite a. It's almost got a, like a, an other world kind of sound, like almost magical kind of sound. You can imagine some kind of door opening up and a load of light coming out and you know, you're just entering this secret garden or something. Like that kind of thing, it, it evokes those images. But if we wanna just put it into like a kind of bringing it down to earth sort of uh, description. If I'm in the key of E, and if I play a major scale starting from E, and if I go to the fourth note of the major scale, okay, I'm in A. Now, if I work with the same notes and make chords out of it, I'm in the E major scale. It's just that when you go from the A, you get that note available to you within the chord. Okay, now, um, sometimes you'll hear that in music and it'll happen so quickly you won't notice it, but some bands and some artists, they really use it. They kind of, they hang on it and, and it makes their music very atmospheric. Um, perfect example is David Bowie. He did it all the time. And another one is Queensryche, the heavy metal band Queensryche. Wow, they really use it. They use it well. Okay, so moving on. Now hear that resolving, it just resolves. And then we go to a minor chord and it's the, the minor chord is more kind of like resolving. It feels more settled. So this, it would be A flat, it would actually be A flat minor, I guess, but I'm just playing like an A flat five, which is like a power chord. I'm not playing a root note. I'm just playing that. And then I'm playing C sharp minor. These minor chords, they've got, they've got a lot of color. They've got a lot of expression and they sound, uh, you know, there's just more going on. The thing is with power chords, of course, they're brilliant, powerful. 
And but if now and again you can slip in something with more detail, then it just adds a little bit more colour. Now this one I like. Now that is really Beatles right there. I'm playing A and I'm playing G sharp seven. All right, you can just have a listen through a few Beatles songs. You'll hear that chord change. Oh, I love that chord change. Okay, and then I go to a B. So again, it, it settles it down. Now, F sharp minor, it just makes everything feel like it brings a sadness to it, but at the same time, it's kind of like, it just lightens everything down a little bit. So let's take a look. Let's go for the solo riff. Richard wrote this riff, Richard Gumbel, he, this is his riff. Much more heavy metal riff, this one. Very chromatic, very master of puppets. Lots of muting. Try and get that kind of like, you know, kind of, I guess, a Metallica influence sort of sound. I mean, I really love early Metallica. I guess it's one of the things that will divide some of us. Uh, you know, I embrace lots of different influences. You know, I love hard rock. And, you know, I do like my heavy metal as well. As you know, I love the Beatles. I love all that Mersey Beat 60s stuff. Massive fan of that. Um, I'll just take certain things. I'll take what I like, you know. You know, I might listen to something like Gary Moore and think, wow, that's the greatest guitar sound ever, you know. And then I'll hear ACDC. And then I'll hear Rush. And I'll just think, wow, you know, I'll just take what I want to take from it. And, you know, although I can understand some people maybe not seeing the same things that I see, they might see things inside that music that they find either offensive or, um, you know, just it, jarring, I guess, you know, As, especially when it comes. I mean, one of the things is with punk rock, I've always really, of course, loved the lyrical aspect. And we know that that is something that, you know, we have in punk rock, but it doesn't necessarily happen in some other forms of music. But, you know, come on, it, it happens elsewhere, you know. Bob Dylan, I mean, look at his songwriting. You know, and in actual fact, you know, the Rolling Stones in that late 60s era were writing some really good lyrics. So it's all out there, all there for you to find, just like these modes. So I would say don't shy away from this stuff because... I find it really inspiring. It makes me pick a guitar up and it sometimes helps me write a tune. And if it's done that, I can't ask for any more. <laughs> All right, so hope you enjoyed this vid. The next thing I'll be showing you how to play the solo. <laughs> 